There we go. Okay. So, this is quite a nice simple topic. There's not that much you need to know. Basically, you need to know what a magnetic field is and the shape a magnetic field will take around uh, some different objects. So, magnetic fields are generated when there is a moving electrical charge. So, they're generated by a moving electrical charge. And this can get scaled up to different levels depending on whether things are aligned or not aligned. So if things are cancelling each other out, so say they're going in exact opposite directions and they have exact opposite tiny magnets or whatever, then you're not going to generate a large scale magnetic field. But this is why electromagnetism really is all altogether what it's about. Because it's all about electric charges, things with an electrical charge, um, moving. Um, so what is a magnetic field? Well it's a region of space, so it's a region of space in which a magnetic material will experience a force. Okay, so uh, because it's a field, it means it's a region of space that this is happening to, um, and it's going to be a magnetic material that will experience a force within that field. Uh, okay, so we have our bar magnet, and we can see all these little lines. These are representing the force that would be applied to a magnetic material if it was there. So here is our magnetic material, our compass. So if we move it around, we see that the force it's experiencing changes depending on where it is in the magnetic field, this region of space. Um, if we look inside the magnet, we can see that that field is extending within that magnet, okay? Because it's just the idea that you've got the domains aligning and within the domains you have uh, atoms which have enough alignment within them to generate a magnetic field and not be cancelled out. If uh, we pop on um, planet Earth, this is a rubbish diagram. This is a rubbish diagram because there is not actually a bar magnet within the Earth. There is actually a geodynamo operating. But again, this explains why um, a, the movement of molten iron and nickel would actually generate a magnetic field. Because you have the movement of um, particles, you have movement of atoms that have roughly a half-filled outer shell and so will have a magnetic field around themselves, which when they start to move they can generate a complicated magnetic field which at Earth's surface can be approximated to be a dipole like this, so you've got it curling around, which is why sometimes people put a bar magnet inside. Thank you geographers. Okay, magnetic fields are generated by moving electrical charge and the magnetic field itself is a region of space in which a magnetic material will experience a force. This is a vector field space because it needs to represent both a magnitude and a direction. Okay, so it's both the magnitude and the direction that will be affected. So in um, that simulation, the way that it was presented is it was presented as lots of little um, compass points. And it was, so that was giving the direction of the force. It was also trying to represent the magnitude by sort of showing how brightly lit those little magnetic compasses were. If instead of little tiny magnets, we were to represent it with field lines, then we would have two things. So field lines, so if I drew a magnet, uh, let's say, let's go with north and south, we could represent uh, this magnetic field as field lines around that, so they would be looping around it. 
So they'll be going from the north to the south. This is where I hope my diagram drawing abilities are up to it. Okay, so they're going from the north to the south. And so we're using a combination of the lines and the arrows to indicate direction. So that is our direction part of uh, the vector field space. The magnitude is being represented by how close together the lines are. So close together equals strong and far apart all equal weak. Now, actually, by definition, we can sort of see the reason why magnetic field lines can never cross. Because if you had um, some crossing field lines, so if we had two magnetic field lines, like that, say, that doesn't actually make any sense. Because at this point, what's the direction? Also, what's the strength? So that would have um, infinite strength because you've got two field lines really close to each other and two directions. So that just can't happen. You cannot draw magnetic field lines as crossing because it doesn't make any sense. It is not giving you true information because every point in that field space will have a direction and a strength because even if there are competing magnetic fields, they're going to um, cancel each other out. They're going to superimpose upon one another and you will have a resultant direction and a resultant force. Okay, so you need to know um, what the field lines around uh, different objects are going to be. So if we were, say, trying to um, represent an attractive force between two objects, say north and south, then the field would be strongest within the middle and would basically have a uniform magnetic field between the two sides. So because it's uniform, it's got the same strength, same direction, so we need to have parallel lines with the same gap in between them. And then at the edges, it's going to do something a bit like this. Note that not everything has to come out of the end because actually it's the magnetic field is generated throughout and by each individual part of that magnet. If we had a repulsive field, then it might look something a bit like this. And you'll note that because it's cancelling out, at some point there will be a region where there is no field. So because if you paste something in there, it will be equally attracted. So say we had a tiny south pole in here. It will be equally attracted and equally repulsed to both of them. So because the field is representing the magnitude and direction of a force, there would be no field in this central section because it, the resultant force would be zero because it will be equally on both sides. It's not this sort of mystical place where no magnetic force can touch it. No, it's just that it is, an equal, it is being equally attracted and repulsed from both sides. So then there'll be no field in that space. If we have a, a current carrying wire, I'm going through paper like nobody's business. So if we have a current carrying wire, realign a bit. Current carrying wire. Then um, for a single wire we're going to use um, the thumb screw rule. So that means that my thumb is representing uh, the current and then the fingers are representing the way the field is wrapping around that. It's going to be strongest closer to the wire and it's going to get weaker as it goes further away. So how we're going to draw this is we're going to draw this with concentric circles uh, moving out. So my dot is going to represent 
the current coming out of the plane of the paper. Think of this like a screw, because if you've got a Phillips head screw, uh, Phillips screwdriver, if it was coming towards you, you'd just see the point, and um, as it was going into the paper, you would see the cross head. Yeah, so that's going into the paper. This is coming out of the paper. So think of it like a screw. That end, pointy end is coming towards you, putting it into the paper. So this is going to have concentric circles around it. We know that. Apologies for the quality of drawing. They should be the same circle all the way around. And so now we can think about what it's going to be with our screw rule. So it's coming out of the paper. So it's going to wrap around in that direction. This one is going into the paper. So if we draw it again, this time it's going in. So they're going to wrap around in the opposite direction. Now, how can you make this stronger? Well, what you could do is you could loop that, that wire around, you could coil it up, and this is effectively going to be superimposing those magnetic fields on each other. And so if we were to coil it up like this into a solenoid, we could think about what was happening Nope, oh, that's the wrong way around. We could think about what was happening at each individual part. We could draw them all together and then work out what the super um, position would look like. So we go, okay, it's going in like that, so it's wrapping around like that, it's wrapping around. Or we could just learn this diagram and um, see that it's sort of going in. So the current's going in there. So the field lines are going to be going in and around, and what we'll see is actually that this is going to be approximating a bar magnet. So again, it's another one of those approximations that I love so much. If you didn't look at the central field lines and said, oh actually, that's just a magnet, then it looks very sensible in terms of this dipolar um, field, so you've got your magnetic field above and below where it's going to be strongest at each of the poles. So that is the magnetic field around a solenoid. So in summary, magnetic field is a vector field space that shows both the magnitude and the direction of a magnetic field um, around it and it's demonstrating the magnitude and direction of a force on a magnetic material that is placed within that field.